Do you or somebody you know suffer from quilter's amnesia? This is a mysterious condition that is caused by the finishing of a quilt top. Perhaps these symptoms sound familiar. You finish piecing your top only to forget every quilting design you've ever learned. While mysterious, it's very common. In fact, it afflicts most machine quilters. Okay, obviously I'm just joking, but we've all been there, right? You finish the quilt top, you can't remember any of your quilting designs. In fact, you have no clue how you're gonna quilt it. It's all too familiar, and in this tutorial, I'll give you some things to think about when you're trying to pick out designs for your quilts. Hi, I'm Angela Walters from Quilting Is My Therapy, and this is the last video in our free motion challenge quilting along. Well, at least this one, we will be having another one. And now we have to fill in the backgrounds and the border to see what our quilt's gonna look like. If you just happen to stumble along this video because you're in the rabbit hole that is YouTube, don't worry. Even if you didn't make this exact quilt, the things that we're gonna talk about in this video will help you decide on how to quilt your quilt. The first thing you need to do is look over your quilt and decide how much you love the blocks in the quilt. I know it sounds a little weird, but we're gonna use the quilting to highlight or hide particular blocks in your quilt depending on how you feel about them. First up, let's pretend you finish your quilt top, you're looking it over, and you're pretty proud of yourself. Those blocks look fantastic. What you can do is quilt them all the same. The first quilting example I'm gonna use with our quilting along quilt uses dot to dot quilting to frame the blocks, but I'm quilting them all the same way. That way I have this nice overall texture, all the blocks shine, and it's fast and easy with no marking. Basically what I'm doing is using the corners of the block as my guide, quilting a line out to the edge, traveling, and then coming back. That's what's really gonna help give this block that kind of twisted, slanted, whirling kind of look. Now I am incorporating a little bit of traveling in this technique. I use traveling to work my way around a quilt. You could of course leave that out if you'd like, but it's gonna take a lot of starts and stops to finish a quilt. So kind of weigh that and decide how you like it. And since I'm using those geometric straight lines around the block, I thought it would be nice to do a curvy contrasting design like the wishbone. Now I'll show you what the rest of that looks like at the end of the video. Well next let's talk about the second way to go about quilting your quilt, highlighting some of the blocks. Most often this is going to be the case. Making quilt blocks is kind of like having children and making pancakes, right? You mess up the first few, but by the time you get to the end, they're pretty perfect. So when you're looking at your quilt, if you think, mm, I don't love all the blocks, there's a few that I'm pretty proud of, what you can do is use the quilting to highlight that. And in the second quilting option for the quilting along, what we're gonna do is use echoing around our favorite blocks. Now straight line echoing is kind of a way to add a parentheses or to kind of gently point you to the area you want people to look at. It's almost like saying, hey, this is a pretty fantastic block, you should probably look at it. Now straight line echoing is my favorite because it acts like that frame. It really kind of separates it from the rest of the filler that I'm gonna use in the background, and it's easy, so there's that. Now if you don't love straight lines, don't worry, you can do some other echoing options, whether it's using a different design around a block or even using wavy lines. And once you have all your frames quilted, then it's time to fill in around it. And it just so happens we've learned some amazing designs during this quilting along. So what you can do is actually combine them to create a fun filler. The trick to combining designs is to quilt the bigger elements first, such as the feather meander or a swirl. Then to come back and fill in around with the smaller designs, like a regular meander or a wishbone. The hardest part about combining designs is that you might get gaps in your quilting, and I think people will notice a gap in the quilting before they notice an error. So as long as you're filling it in, whether it's with smaller designs or echoing, it's going to look fine. This is a great way to practice different designs, and heck, it just keeps me from getting bored. Another thing that will help you in your combining designs is to think about keeping the spacing between the lines the same. Since we're using so many different kinds of designs and different shapes, we want to make sure that one design doesn't stand out too much more than the other. The spacing between the lines will keep the density the same and allow it all to kind of blend together. That is, of course, unless you want one element to show up more than the other. 
that would look kind of cool too. And here you can see that I don't have any gaps in my quilting and all the spacing is the same. So I have my echoed blocks, I'm combining my designs in the filler, I'm loving how it looks, but I'm gonna wait and show you what that whole quilt looks like at the end, so stick around. The third quilting along option is where we're maybe trying to distract from all the blocks. This is when we're gonna use the quilting to create a fun secondary pattern in the quilt. Now, I'll do this even if I love the quilt blocks because I think it's fun and amusing. When I stepped back and I looked at the quilt, I could almost imagine the zigzag come out where the blocks were turning away from each other. I thought, what if we extended those lines and created a grid that we could fill in later? So you know, that's exactly what I did. Quilting along the side of the blocks and extending the lines out into the sashing. How fun is this? My ruler that I designed with creative grids fits perfectly inside these blocks. I promise I didn't do that on purpose. Once I got to the middle of the sashing, that was my pivot point, where I would turn and quilt the next direction heading towards the next block. Since the blocks are kind of acting as a guide for my quilting, that means I don't have to do any marking. So I'm gonna keep doing this down one side of the quilt and then I'll repeat on the other side until I have my secondary pattern. So I had to give you a quick sneak peek of what this is looking like. There are my lines quilted along the side of the blocks. Now obviously I've got those straight lines, but I'm gonna go back and fill in some more and I'm gonna show you what it looks like at the very end. Now when it came to all three options, I probably wouldn't do every one on the same quilt, but for this one, since I'm using it as a teaching tool, I'm gonna use the framing option, the dot-to-dot -dot quilting around the blocks with the wishbone, and even the secondary patterns. And even though I'm using a hot pink thread and quilting a lot of different designs on it, I am so in love with the way it looks. In a few of the blocks, I used the first option where we quilted them all the same with the dot-to-dot -dot quilting and the wishbones in between. It looks so great and even better, no marking. In a couple of the other blocks, I used a second option where I quilted the frame around it and combined designs as a filler. I especially had a lot of fun sneaking in those wishbones in random places. But then again, I'm pretty easily amused. I'm not gonna lie, if I had to pick a favorite, it would be making the secondary design with the quilting. Adding the echo lines and the serpentine lines gives it just a nice pop of texture. And it just so happens I put together some free downloadable PDFs that will show you exactly how to quilt all three options. All you have to do is look in the description box below. So what do you think? When you're looking at your quilts, which option do you think you'll be using more? Showing them all off, highlighting some of them, or creating that fun secondary pattern? Go ahead and finish up your quilting along quilts if you're doing the free motion challenge. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, be sure to check the description box below. All you have to do is scroll down, you'll see a little arrow that says more, and that will have all the information that we're talking about in this video. And since you're already scrolling down there, go ahead and hit subscribe because you don't wanna miss my next video where I announce the next free motion challenge quilt that we're working on. And it's gonna be really fun, I can't wait. Well, I guess all that's left to do now that I'm done is to bind the quilt, Ugh, which is my least favorite part. I wonder if there's a binders avoidance class somewhere.